Resident film expert Chris Gore is here. Best DV Tuesday ever. Three people today. care yet again. Oh wow! Best DV Tuesday ever. Put it on the line. Well, yeah. Let's do it. Here we go. Ghost in the Shell: Solid State Society, which isn't about uh, flash memory. Uh, or I was very you, disappointed. You could call it Git Sex. Some people call it from the TV show. But ah. but uh, it's Masumine Shiro's. Uh, cre- he created Ghost in the Shell. Uh, this is sort of a TV movie version of one of the stories it's set in 2030. Lots of robots. Um, you know, look, it's consistent with the quality of if you've been watching the series and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's look, it's great, it's fantastic. I'm not one of those. I love the first Ghost in the Shell movie. I thought it was fantastic. I think it's been diminishing returns since. Um, of course, the reason to get any of these DVDs of the extras comes in a tin box. Um, you get the soundtrack, a whole disc of extras, including one of the coolest extras. I gotta say was they, they did this whole thing on the robots. They wanted the physicality of the robots in the cartoon to work. They actually used animation to create these robots to, so that they could exist in physical reality. And really? they built physical versions of the robots. So they could see how it would move and interact. And, and then they made as small a robots as they possibly gotcha. could. This is the smallest version we did. So there's this whole documentary on how they just created the robots. Look at it go, too. I, I doing swear. Some Darren's dance steps there. The Japanese have a long-term plan to make robots and take over right. the world. People are and, worried the Japanese are going to take over the world. No, they're now, robots. The ro- will take over the, the world. robots will take over the world. And this documentary and it shows starts how with they the Roomba. <laughs> it starts so with the Roomba. Get them out of there. I don't trust that scuba attachment. <laughs> but this was, I mean, this was a the- fascinating extra, even though I'm not a fan of the series. What's the bottom line then? Which leads to a rent. It's a, okay. so- a solid rent. It's, it's, it's great, but not, you know, not everything for, right. for non fans Let's move on to my favorite fetish porn of the, uh, of the, of the aughts, of the 2000s. Ah. Black Snake Moan. Black Snake Moan. Now, when this movie came out to theaters, they sent a little promotion out there. And if you're looking at the box there, it yeah. looks like it, you can see that in the porn. You can see there's a porn right Literally. in the porn section. In fact, here's a belt oh, buckle okay. that came out. All with. right. A little if warning a little would have been nice up. on that. I'm telling you, uh, I don't, don't, don't believe what you read. I don't believe what you read, but, but uh, no, look. Your, your downstairs mix-up is, is hot. <laughs> it's good to go. But this is from uh, Craig Brewer at Hustle & Flow. He did an underground film called The Poor and Hungry, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Samuel L. Jack. Jackson and Christina Ricci. Oh, Christina. She's sort of Christina, you know, she's a, she's a wild chick and he's going to tame her. I love he's her. He's going to tame her and he, he, he keeps this her. This was ripped straight from chain fan fiction that I wrote on a live journal account that I had back in 1994. Well, I'll tell I said you. I would chain that woman up to a radiator and tame her. It, it does seem like a penthouse letter, the yes, beginning it of it, you know, something like that. And there is, if you're interested, there is a topless Christina Ricci. And I mean, she's, if you're interested, uh, she's, yes, the whole audience she's is hot. nodding. What about specials, she's hot. though? Well, yeah, the thing is, I'll say about the movie, I don't think the movie totally succeeded. The specials on this are great. Craig Brewer, the, the writer director, mm-hmm. He walks you through the, the, the each step sequence? of the movie. Well, yeah, not just the topless sequence. He's Do we get storyboards? He's incredibly self-deprecating. No, not storyboards. But he talks about how Christina Ricci lobbied for the part. Um, he, he gives a lot of advice to filmmakers. In this, actually, he, he allowed Christina Ricci to actually pick her own chain that she would wear throughout the film. Kind of like how Sam Jackson got to pick his lightsaber in Star Wars. She got to pick her chain. So the, the behind the scenes on it are great. The movie's not, I'm not as So what's the verdict the then when you combine those two? It's, it's a solid rent because and not for the movie it's a rent because the extras are amazing Ricci picking a chain i know it's i'm bizarre. there for that all right yeah. we have the astronaut farmer next now this is i, I remember hearing about this film but completely it, passed up my kind my of based radar. on a, a news story where a guy was going to build his rocket and go in outer space but right. but um the polish brothers uh michael and mark polish they did this film they got billy bob thornton to be in it it's about a farmer who builds a rocket ship he was going to take to the no, moon and is okay it a true story? Like the, is it based no on it's not a true story it's based no. on no. something uh, you know on, on a true like thing that a guy tried to do and this he actually the rocket goes off into space. So I, I describe it as like it's a family movie, really. Right. But it's a family movie that, you know, a lot of these family movies are so well, milk toast and gentrified. They're kind of boring. <laughs> this, I was totally, I got, I got to be honest, I got chills watching this film. Wow. I mean, I honestly got chills watching this. That's great. Billy Bob Thornton has such a, a chemistry with the kids in the movie. But like the two girls that you see are the daughters of the directors. So, uh, so I mean, it was cool how he got them to do stuff. And what about, do you, do you see behind the scenes on special features of them getting together, interacting with well, each other? Well, see, or? that's the thing is, this movie is, is fantastic. It's one of those family movies that's not, you know, boring for the adults, but there's not a lot of extras on it. Mm. The commentary that we would really you'd want to have on it isn't there. Right. But there is some really good behind the scenes stuff, deleted scenes, bloopers, and Well, whatnot. we need the bottom line then on the astronaut farmer. What's your verdict? Bottom Chris? line is it's a rent. And I also have a recommendation in the form of kind of a quick pick. Oh, yeah. What's this here? It's a book. It's actually okay. a book that the uh, Declaration, in Declaration of Independent Filmmaking, written by the Polish brothers who directed who the did film. did the astronaut farmer. Okay. So, so I mean, one. 
one of the top ten books you need to get about indie film. So get the book, check out the movie. Very Rent cool. It. Rent the movie, but own the book. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. That's how I. That's how I did it. All right. Awesome, Chris. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks for coming for on. Me. Thanks for bringing the pics. Cool. Everybody, visit filmthreat.com for more movie info and the path to enlightenment. Attack of the show, weeknights at seven, only on G4.